The answer to the question is maybe, and I'll tell you why. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. And I make videos all about the journey of starting a candle business. And if you stumbled upon this video, you're looking at candle making videos, or maybe you're thinking about starting your own candle making business, I do have a free download for you. It is a candle business launch checklist. And what this is, is it's basically just a launch checklist that you can go through. So prior to actually launching your candle business, you can kind of go through and see the things that you should be considering and things that you should accomplish prior to that actual launch date. You can go to ericamariemorris.com slash checklist and you'll also get on my email list as well. And I've been sending out helpful business tips every week and you can join the email list and be a part of my little community that I am building online that I'm really excited about. But today's video, I am just gonna be sharing with you why I add beeswax to my soy candles. I can't tell you how many times I get this question, you know, how much beeswax should I add? Should I add beeswax to my candles? Um, does it help with hot throw? And I think that there is maybe a misconception on adding beeswax to my soy candles, or maybe I just haven't been very um, good at expressing why I do that. So I thought I'd make a whole video about this topic just so I can address why I actually add beeswax to my soy candles. So contrary to popular belief or kind of assumptions on why I add beeswax to my soy candles, it has absolutely nothing to do with hot throw. So if you are thinking about should I add beeswax to my candles, whether it's coconut, soy, whatever you're working with, because you're trying to increase the hot throw, that's not necessarily in my experience and my research and all that, that's not really something to increase the hot throw. It's not to increase the hot throw, it's not to increase the cold throw. The reason that I add in a little bit of beeswax into my soy candles is just to raise that melt point of the wax. So beeswax has a very high melt point. It has a melt point of about, I believe, 145 to 150 ish versus my soy 10 wax, which I believe is more of like the 125 to 130. So even adding in a little bit of that percentage is going to change the melt pool of that overall blend that you are creating. So that's kind of how I got around changing up other variables in my candle equation. So I went through so much testing with my Cali jars, with the 13.5 ounce Cali jars. The diameter of them is 3.25 inches, which I think that any diameter that's like just under three inches up to that three and a quarter inch is very hard to wick because you kind of go back and forth based on the materials that you're working with. Should you single wick it? Should you double wick it? Single wicking for me with these jars and the wax that I used just did not work for me. I was not able to reach the edge. And even if I did, if I tried to wick up really high, then it was just sooting and smoking and I did not like that at all. But once I double wicked it, it reached the edge and it was burning a lot better. But you have to be very careful when you double wick that it's not burning too hot for the vessel. It can be a very big safety hazard and be really dangerous. So I spent months and months just kind of um, wicking down in the series. So I started off with the Eco series wicks, wicked all the way down to two Eco ones. And even with that, I noticed that with two Eco ones in those jars with just straight soy 10 burn too quickly, it burned too hot. So then I switched over to the CDN um, series wicks and then wicked all the way down to that CDN twos. And even that I noticed was burning a little bit too hot. So my thought process was, okay, well, what changes, what other factors change the wick performance? And I know that the melt point of the wax is going to make a difference because if there's a higher melt point, it's going to take a lot more heat and a lot stronger of a wick, a lot bigger of a wick to be able to burn through that top layer and get it burned all the way through and melted all the way through to that melt pool. So I was thinking if I add in a, in a little bit of beeswax, it's going to raise that overall 
melt point of my wax and then it might get me to that sweet spot to where uh, the candle is going to burn better and not burn too hot for a double wicked vessel. And that's pretty much what happened. And I did kind of experiment with different levels, different percentages of beeswax. And that's also why I don't mention a percentage. I know a lot of people are like, what's the exact ratio that you use? I don't wanna give that out just because one, I change it up depending on the vessels and sometimes depending on the scents that I use. So I don't want to give a number and then have people think that that's going to work specifically in their case. But if you are watching this and you are going through something similar and you have noticed that you've changed up all these different variables but it's still not working, I think that the next step, and this is definitely a little bit more advanced, is bringing in a wax blend um, and adding in something else to the wax that's going to change the performance of the wick um, or wicks in this, in this case. So um, if you are wanting to do that, or if this sounds like something that you're wanting to try, um, I would probably start off with anywhere from like one to 3% beeswax and get started from there. You may need to go up. 2% may be fine. You'll never know unless you do your own testing with your vessels and the wicks that you're using. Um, but again, I don't like to just give out what my percentage is because it's just, it changes and I don't want people to think that that's like the only way to do it. Um, and I also don't want people to think that you have to add beeswax to your candles. Trust me, if you can get away with not doing it and just doing a getting your wax from the supplier and just melting that and pouring it, it is going to be so much better. I tried, I actually did a three wax blend before in the past. I think I did Soy 10, TW30 and beeswax at one point, which is, I can't believe I ever did that. Just the less steps that you can do, the better. And if I could just do soy, soy 10, I would prefer to do that. So I don't want you to think that just because I'm doing it, you have to do it as well, or I'm doing it for like the hot throw or smooth tops or anything like that. It has nothing else to do except for raising that melt point just a little bit, just to get a better performance in my double wicked vessel. But I hope that that cleared everything up on why I add in a little bit of beeswax into my soy candles. I would love to hear from you on if you do a custom wax blend, do you add beeswax? Do you add different waxes together and how have you figured it out and what is your reasoning for blending waxes? Or do you just do the wax from the supplier and you don't blend anything into it at all. I am very envious of you. <laughs> um, but with that, I think I'm going to end today's video right here. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave it a big thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.